Hey guys, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to do my one week post-op video. Just about a week ago, I had my vertical sleeve gastrectomy or gastric sleeve surgery. So today we're going to be talking all about what's happened in the last week or so. And if you haven't seen my pre-op videos, I will go ahead and link the playlist right up there for you so you can get all caught up on my weight loss surgery journey. Um, but I guess actually we should probably start back where I left off the last video. Uh, in the last video, I was about halfway through my pre-op liquid diet. I had to do a liquid diet for two weeks, so I made that video about a week in, uh, but I ended up finishing that liquid diet off really, really strongly. I didn't cheat once. I was so proud of myself, uh, but yeah, so that was pretty much all of that, and then I did get a few instructions few when the hospital called me to tell me what time I needed to be there for surgery. Uh, let's see. One of them was um, I couldn't use any creams or lotions after I took my last shower the night before surgery, um, so I, like, not even on my face. I couldn't even put, like, face moisturizer on. So I was like dry as a desert going into surgery. And then another one of the things they told me, um, I take three blood pressure medications. They told me not to take two of them the night before for whatever reason. I'm not exactly sure. Um, so I was only able to take one uh, blood pressure medication the night before, um, but they did take my blood pressure the next day in the hospital and it was, it was fine. Um, so that wasn't that big of a deal. Um, anything else that they told me? I honestly don't remember at this point. Nothing, nothing crazy. Oh, no body jewelry. That was another thing. Um, so you'll see, I do have a nose ring in, uh, because the day before surgery, I went and got my, uh, little stud that I usually wear taken out. Um, I had not removed that stud in like three years. So I tried myself, um, to like pull it apart and I couldn't do it. So I had to go to a shop and get it done. Um, and then I just bought this little thing on Amazon. It's like one of those half ones. So you can see it. It's like not all the way. I hate this thing. It's so annoying. It feels like it's gonna fall out like every like three seconds. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting my little stud put back in. But I think this is pretty cute. Like this little this little uh, this little ring here. But it's just not practical. And of course, I did not wear this during surgery. I just got this so that I could easily put it in myself after surgery. So then on June 17th, the day of my surgery, I was scheduled to be at the hospital at 8.15 in the morning. My family took me over there. We got there right on time and we ended up waiting in the surgery waiting room for just a few minutes, maybe like 10, 15 minutes before they came and got me and then took me back to like the triage room, pre-op room kind of thing. So I got back there and I had to do a urine test just to make sure that I wasn't pregnant. I think they also drew some blood. Um, they also gave me um, these special towelettes that I had to kind of like uh, wash my body with kind of like just kind of like a baby wipe kind of thing that I had to like rub all over myself because they did not give me any kind of special soap to use. I know I've seen a few people say in their videos that their doctor gave them a special soap to like wash down with uh, like the night before surgery. I didn't get that. I ended up having to use like these baby wipe kind of things. They took some labs. I think they put my um, they put my IV in. Everything was good. Um, though I was told at one point that the doctors were running quite far behind that day. I guess one of the doctors didn't get there in time to start because I think I was probably the second or maybe even the third person to go for the day. So I got there at like 8.15 and I think my schedule, uh, my surgery was probably scheduled to start at like 10 o'clock. Um, but the doctors were running quite behind. So um, it, it was what it was. It wasn't like the worst thing in the world, but I know they did tell the girl who went after me, they called her and told her to, uh, to wait an hour before she got there. They just didn't end up being able to call me. So I got there right on time um, and ended up having to wait around a little bit. But um, and after we were all done doing all of our medical stuff in the pre-op room, they let my family come back and my daughter um, was actually sick that day. I know in that last video, I talked about how I didn't want to get sick um, and I didn't get sick fortunately, but my daughter ended up getting sick. Um, so she was just she was just super fun to have in that room, let me tell you. She was just, you could just tell, she did not feel good at all. She was in a stroller. She just wanted to be able to run around. Um, so they ended up staying just a little bit. They didn't stay very long. My husband ended up taking them back out to breakfast um, and they were kind of staying around the hospital, but they were not in the hospital actually when I had my surgery, which I was totally fine with. That didn't bother me at all. I figured that was actually probably going to be the case. Um, but after they left um, and they ended up taking all of my stuff with me as 
as well. So I didn't even have my cell phone. I had nothing except my glasses and my glasses case. Um, so I just watched TV in that little room for like an hour and a half uh, before it was time to then wheel me on to surgery. So kind of a funny little story. I'm being wheeled into surgery and the nurse is kind of like running behind the guy who's pushing the gurney to get me to the surgery. She's like, Lindsay, Lindsay, here, here, here. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I didn't have my glasses on at this point. So I had no idea what was going on. She hands me this like old style, like brick phone. Like it was this big, heavy brick thing. She's like, here, you have a phone call. I'm like, what? Okay. It's my husband. I don't know how he got that number, but he ended up being able to find me like literally as I'm being wheeled into the operating room. And he's like, hi, just wanted to wish you good luck. You know, we'll be there for you right after surgery. Um, and oh, by the way, Ivy threw up in the middle of the restaurant just now. So we had to go home and uh, change her and then we'll come right back. I was like, oh, great. Thanks for telling me that right before you go into surgery. But I was like, well, at least I don't have to deal with it, right? <laughs> I think because it wasn't that she was like, she didn't have like a stomach flu or anything. It was just like all of the mucus that she had because she had a cold was kind of like stuck in the back of her throat, that kind of thing. Um, and I guess it happened at dinner that night too. Um, just when they were home, it happened again. But I just thought that was really funny. Like the last thing I hear before I'm going into surgery is that my daughter threw up all over a restaurant. Um, so anyways, I, you know, say goodbye to them and then I get wheeled into the, into the operating room. And again, I don't have my glasses on. I have terrible vision. I can't see. I'm not sure if the doctor is in the, is, is in the room yet. Um, or, or what. Um, oh, and also I meant to mention, my doctor did come in to the pre-op room as well, talked to me for just a few minutes. The anesthesiologist came in and talked to me for, for a few minutes as well. Um, but all right, so then back into the operating room. My, uh, my IV bag was kind of like hanging right here um, on my gurney thing. And I remember somebody like touching it. Uh, probably the anesthesiologist again I don't I don't know I couldn't see her um, but there like it was right here someone started messing with it I don't know what they were doing and then I don't remember anything else I don't remember like being slid onto the operating table then putting the little thing on me I don't know if I had to count backwards from 10 like you see in the movies is that something that really happens I have no clue um, but I don't remember a single thing after she started playing with my IV. So whatever she gave me, like before it was even on the table, like completely knocked me out. So no idea how anything went there. So then the next thing I remember is waking up in the recovery room. And let me tell you, anesthesia is no joke. This is the first time I had ever gone under any kind of anesthesia, so I had no idea how my body would react or anything. Um, I did not handle it great. I don't think it was probably the worst, but I definitely didn't handle it very well. Um, so I do like vaguely remember being woken up in the recovery room and like, I don't even remember what people were talking to me about, what was being said. I think at one point I did kind of ask for my glasses. Um, so I did get those put on, um, but I, <laughs> I don't remember anything. The really, really weird part about anesthesia for me was I just could not physically keep my eyes open for more than like literally two seconds at a time um, for hours afterwards. Um, I wanted to try and keep my eyes open. I remember I really, really did. I just, I physically could not. Um, I And at this point, I don't remember my pain level. I, I think I was discomfort. Like, I think I had some discomfort, but I don't remember being in a whole lot of pain at that point. And because I was so just like discombobulated, like I had no sense of time or anything, uh, but my husband told me that they usually keep people, or this is what they told him, that they usually keep people in the recovery room for like an hour. I was there for two hours because I was just so unresponsive just because I could not like physically talk because I was just like so drained, just so out of it. It was very strange. I didn't feel nauseous right away, though a little bit later on that night I did feel some nausea. Um, but finally, eventually they did move me up to my room. And when I got to my room, they made me go from the gurney that I was on to the bed that was in the room. And that probably took a good 10 minutes for me to like get the energy to like sit up and then move to the other room, especially because I was, you know, still hooked up to IVs and stuff. Um, and then I got to my room and I think probably not long after I got in my room, my family came in and like, I was just so out of it. I probably didn't even say one single word to them. I vaguely remember like hearing them, don't know what they said. And gosh, I feel really, really bad that that happened. Like, with, especially with my son, like I bet he was like, 
freaked out. Like he's like, why isn't mom like talking or doing anything? Like, right? Like, I don't know. I just didn't, I did not expect him to like react that way at all. But I was just sitting there like, uh, 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 yeah, kind of like that. Like I just, oh man, it's awful. I hated it. Um, but so I feel like he never like said anything that he was like scared, like how I was reacting or anything, but I hope it didn't leave like a permanent scar on him or anything. I mean, obviously I'm okay and everything, but that was very weird. So they, I think he said, my husband said that they came initially just for a couple of minutes and then left because they realized that I was like totally out of it. Um, and they think he said they came back maybe one or two more times to try and talk to me. And I think I was pretty out of it every single time. Um, like I said, this like haze that I was in lasted for a very, very long time. So I don't know what time they ended up leaving. Maybe like four o'clock they ended up going home for the day. Um, and then they just stayed at home. They didn't come back anymore after that. So then the next few hours, I was really just kind of in and out of it. Um, and then around eight o'clock, I finally mustered up the energy to get up and go to the bathroom. And then I ended up walking the hall a very, very little bit. I've heard people say how they were like walking like laps around the halls that was not me um, I just like my entire body was just so weak and again I don't really remember the pain level that I was in at that time I did keep pushing the morphine button that I had um, and I think I don't know like I'm trying to remember like this is you know this is a couple weeks ago now almost at this point but yeah like I was in pain I definitely was in pain but it wasn't like the worst pain at that point. Like it, it wasn't. The morphine was probably keeping me, was keeping me a little happy. Um, but walk in the halls, like I maybe made it like three or four doors down and then had to go back to my room. At that point too, I also started to have a little bit of water, just a couple of little sips. Um, I did not have to do a leak test. My doctors actually do a leak test in the operating room, they said, so I didn't have to go and like do a barium swallow with an x-ray or anything like that. And then again, I was just kind of in and out of this haze for the next few hours. But I remember waking up around like 4.30 in the morning and finally feeling okay. So I was finally starting to feel a little bit you know, more awake, more aware of everything. I think at that time I probably got up and used the restroom again. Um, and I remember going on my phone at like 4.30 in the morning and just kind of scrolling through everything because I hadn't been on it all day. Um, and then I did go back to sleep a little bit. Then I woke up probably around seven or so. Oh, also probably around eight o'clock that night when I had gotten up to, uh, to go walk the halls and use the bathroom for the first time. Um, they also gave me my blood pressure medication and they just gave it to me in the normal pill form. So I've, I didn't have to take liquid medications or anything. It was just like my normal pills. Um, so then fast forward again back to the next morning. The doctor came in, said, hi, how are you? And he actually told me that he did not need to repair a hiatal hernia. Um, I know in the last couple of videos, um, I talked about how we discovered that I, we thought we discovered that I had one during a barium cell that I did in his office. Turns out I don't. Um, so I don't know what that was about. He's like, yeah, we looked at it, but it, it didn't need to repair. So I don't know if it's just like a mild high little hernia that I have or if there's nothing there. I'm honestly not sure. But he also told me that the surgery went perfectly fine, no complications, nothing, because I really honestly hadn't heard how my surgery went, I think aside from when I was in the recovery room, um, but by one of the nurses who just said, you know, everything's fine. Um, so that was nice to get a little bit of a reassurance from the doctor just to make sure that everything was good. Um, and then I ended up getting dressed that morning and I brushed my teeth. Um, I actually brought like a whole big bag of toiletries with me. Um, I used my toothbrush and my toothpaste that was it. I brought body wash, shampoo, conditioner, dry shampoo, face wash. I was thinking I was going to feel fine after surgery. Again, that was not the case. The only thing I used out of that dang toiletry bag was my toothbrush and my toothpaste. Um, so I brushed my teeth and then, um, oh, before I brushed my teeth, actually, I did have to order breakfast. I was not hungry at all. I really didn't want to eat but they told me I had to eat breakfast and I ended up, of course, only getting broth and jello. That's like the t only two things that were available to me. So I took a couple of sips of broth. I had a few bites of jello, 
hardly anything at all. Um, and then I ended up going to a post-op class with everybody else who had gotten sleeved the day before. Um, I think there were five of us and we all just kind of sat in this class with one of the nurses who just kind of went over all the nutrition stuff that we need to know for the like few weeks after surgery just what we need to eat like the first day second day and then going in from like the third to the 15th day and then so on and so forth and that class probably lasted about 45 minutes or so and then i went back to my room and about 10 30 my family showed up and i was discharged not long after that so probably by 11 o'clock we were on the road home uh, and then after that, I went right upstairs when we got home and went to bed and just kind of chilled for the rest of the day. And then um, I do remember coming down for dinner and I think I had jello. Yeah, I probably just had jello. Um, but yeah, so that was my stay in the hospital. Uh, but now I am, how many days post op am I? I keep saying this is like my one week post op, but I am farther than one week. I think I am, I'm close to two weeks post op at this point, actually. I'm 11 days post-op today, so um, almost two weeks at this point. Um, so let me just try and give you a quick rundown of like what that first week was like after I got home um, because it was kind of, it, it, it wasn't great. Um, I was in a lot of pain, but not, how should I put this? It, it was very, very painful, but only at certain points like I wasn't in like constant pain that's not what I experienced for the most part maybe the first like day that I got home I was in pain quite a bit but it really really wasn't too bad the thing that really really bothers me or really really bothered me was when I was moving so I actually have six incisions which I feel is a lot but I have six incisions around my stomach and five of them I don't think I felt at all five of them perfectly fine never have given me any trouble at all the last one which is the biggest one and it's still only probably about that big it's small but that's where they did all of the work all of the other um uh, incisions that i have were just like for cameras and lights and stuff which sounds super weird but that's what those were used for they did all of the work out of this one site which is on the left uh, kind of mid to lower side of my um, abdomen and that one was so painful anytime i moved my body anyway like sat up sat down like twisted anything for the first week it was absolutely excruciating and they did give me a norco to take um, and i did use it a few times but i realized that does nothing when i'm actually moving like it numbed the pain i felt like nothing at all um, so i only took like four or five norco and then i just decided to call it quits because whenever i was standing still and not moving i was fine i didn't feel like anything was hurting or anything it was just when i got up to move it was so excruciatingly painful i had to like figure out new ways to like get on my bed get off my bed like rolled off of it really really weird it took me like 10 minutes to get up by myself i think like the third day my husband was out somewhere and the day before i was able to have him help me but he was gone or something and i needed um, I had was laying down or so, I don't know something and I needed to get back up again and it literally took me 10 minutes to figure out how to get off of the bed because it was so painful and it was at, like the same level of pain for the first seven days like I don't feel it diminished at all in pain for the first seven days so that was probably the roughest part of my recovery but then by day seven or day eight it finally started to feel better and now here on day 11 it's hardly painful at all which i'm so so thankful for um if i move a little bit or if i press on it a little bit i can feel it but it is just like a tiny little twinge it's like nothing especially compared to how how much it hurt for so long it felt like um so i'm very thankful that that part of this journey is over um oh my gosh and then i was thinking too like gosh what if in a couple years i want to get a tummy tuck kind of thing you know or where they like remove extra skin if i've got like you know a lot of flab down there i can't imagine having a scar going from like hip to hip if i can't handle a little scar that's like that much can't imagine you know doing one that goes across your whole body um anyways that's a long way off and who knows if i'll ever even get there but so then as far as how i'm feeling now i'm feeling really really good um oh also on monday um we took our uh, daughter and our son but our daughter it was her first day of camp Ever. so we both went because um, my husband was still off that morning he was supposed to go to work that afternoon but we were both off in the morning I was gonna go pick them up from camp by myself um, but we went and to get to the camp you have to go down like a pretty big flight of stairs 
Um, and I was okay, like during the drop off, it was no big deal. But then coming up, I don't know what happened. I felt like I was like gonna keel over. I was so dizzy. I felt really, really nauseous. Just I felt awful. So then we ended up going home and I still feel really, really just nauseous and dizzy. Like I just did not feel right at all. So I took my blood pressure. You guys know I have blood pressure issues. It was so low, so low. I don't remember the exact number, but it was crazy low. It was like, oh, okay. I guess maybe I don't need to take my blood pressure medication anymore. Like, what is this? So I called my doctor and ended up talking with one of the nurses and she talked to the doctor and all that. And they said, yes, definitely do not take the medication anymore. So just this past week, I've just been monitoring my blood pressure without taking my meds. And it's been pretty good. It's been right around 180, no, 120 over 80. I always get that mixed up. They run right around over uh, 120 over 80, which is like the normal. Um, so I'm really, really happy about that. I could not believe how fast that happened as well that I was able to take it off my blood pressure medication like a week after my surgery. No more blood pressure medication for me. At least at this point, again, I'm still monitoring it and when it does start to creep up a little bit, then I'm going to of course call them and ask them if I should start taking maybe one or two of the medications again, just you know, until um, maybe I lose a little bit even more weight, but I don't think that's gonna happen, but who knows. Then I guess the only other thing I really need to touch on is what I've been eating. Um, so for the first two days that I was home from the hospital, it was clear liquids only, meaning I only ate broth and jello. Literally, that was all that I ate for those first two days. And then um, post-op day three, I could start purees, which is the phase that I'm still on. Day 15, which I think is going to be Tuesday for me, so like four days from now, um, I will be able to start my soft food phase. Um, but for now, I've got still a very limited um, selection of foods that I can have. Um, I guess I could expand it a little more if I, if I really, really wanted to. Um, but I feel my plan in general, the one that my doctor gave me is very, very strict compared to other people's. And I'm totally fine with that. Um, obviously, listen to what your doctor says, but my doctor is like hardly any carbs, all protein. Like for the first month, I'm literally eating nothing but protein. Like I can't have applesauce. I've seen other people talk about eating applesauce and yogurt. I can't even have yogurt. I don't like yogurt, so it doesn't bother me, but I can't have applesauce, yogurt. I can't have beans, like, or like, um, like a refried bean. I can't have that, nothing. It has to be like meat or cheese. That's basically my first, my only two options. Um, or like a premier protein drink. I can drink those. Um, and I'm drinking one right now. So basically I've just been kind of cycling through four different meals. So I can do eggs, like scrambled eggs, and I do add a little bit of cheese to that. I can do cottage cheese. Um, I can do pure pureed meat, which I refuse to do because it grosses me out. Um, so I eat uh, tuna from one of those, like I think, what are they called? Um, tuna creations, the Starkist tuna creations. Those are pretty good. I like those and I'm probably supposed to puree it, but honestly, my blender is really, really crappy. Um, and I did try to kind of puree it a little bit the first day and it didn't do anything to it. So um, I just kind of eat it as it is. I do add a little bit of mayonnaise to it. Um, and then I think the only other thing I can eat is, um, or drink is uh, the premier protein. So I'm literally getting 400 calories a day at this point. It's insane. It, that sounds absolutely insane, 400 calories. I've been doing that for over a week at this point. So crazy, but of course, I don't feel hungry at all. Um, I do kind of have to remind myself to eat every single day and to eat three meals every single day. So like I said, I kind of just rotate through those four things really, really looking forward to including some soft foods, which is basically ground turkey or ground beef or ground chicken, any kind of ground meat. And then I think I have to, um, I can have those for two weeks and then I can start eating like actual food. And then at week five, I can finally have some vegetables. Um, cause I'm not, I haven't eaten vegetables in like almost two weeks at this point. I haven't eaten anything but cheese and meat at this point, cheese and fish at this point. It's crazy. But obviously I need to give my stomach some time to heal and give it, you know, easy things to digest. Um, and eating does take me a really, really long time at this point. Like even this protein shake, I've been drinking this for close to two hours at this point, probably maybe even a little bit longer. And there's, there's probably like this much left in here. 
Um, so I'm just going really, really slow with everything. Scrambled egg, the first couple of days, it took me well over an hour to eat one scrambled egg. Now I can do it in like 45 minutes. Um, like again, like a three ounce thing of cottage cheese takes me probably about the same and the, the tuna is probably about the same as well. So usually like with my more solid meals, I'm right about like 45 minutes to an hour for eating those. And then of course I'm supposed to be drinking 64 ounces of water every day. I am nowhere near that. I am lucky if I get like 40 and I constantly have a water bottle with me. I am like taking sips every single time that I remember that I can, just like small little sips. I can actually drink a lot more at one time than I figured that I could. I thought I was gonna be taking like tiny, tiny little sips, but I can get almost a gulp in, not quite, um, but, I, but I can get, you know, a decent amount of water in me at one time and that's not a problem, but I don't know why I'm having such an issue getting so much, you know, getting all of my fluids in. Um, I feel okay, so I don't feel like I'm dehydrated or anything, but I know I do need to work on getting more of my, my liquids in because I know that's really, really important. And I think then that that pretty much covers everything. Um, at this point, I'm still really, really happy with the decision that I made to go through with this surgery. Um, you know, the first week was a little bit rough, but ever since then I have been feeling better and very, very excited that I don't have to be on my blood pressure medication anymore. And just going forward, looking for, uh, I am looking forward to adding more foods uh, into my diet that I'm able to eat and finally getting back on a more like regular kind of diet. Of course, it's never gonna be like regular like it used to be, but but you know what I mean. Um, but again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Feel free to connect with me on Instagram. I've got a lot of positivity going on over there in the last couple of posts that I've posted, which is so exciting. Uh, so I will have my link listed down below. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, let me know if you have any questions and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.